Vicky Gomesall, thank you very much for joining us at Graduate Jobs in Sport Live. Um, how have you found the experience of the day? It's been fantastic, really enjoyed it. it the students are amazing, they've asked some really great questions. Um, I think they've gained a lot from it as well. Absolutely packed as well, so I had a really good time. Um, great sessions as well, I've been really interested to hear what the speakers have been saying, so it's been good. Um, so just talk to us a little bit about your role at Sky Sports News and Sky Sports generally. How long have you been there now? Uh, don't age me, Jonathan. Um, but I think around about nine years now. Um, yeah, presenter there for about eight years, uh, a reporter for one year. So I've kind of come through the ranks for, to, to be a presenter, but um, did so many things prior in my life. Nothing traditional as well. There's kind of people that will tell you a traditional route, but I didn't do the traditional route, but I did do all my broadcast journalism training on the job at the BBC and then came to Sky when BBC had had enough of me. So did you always want to be a journalist or did you always want to work in sport? Um, probably the sport element more than anything. Um, it was I didn't always want to work in sports. I wanted to be a teacher. It was always kind of children's was my kind of thing, but I played a lot of sports. So kind of I suddenly tallied the two um, when I went to the BBC. I was working for Blue Peter actually, ironically, so there was the children's element. And then I kind of went on an attachment to sport because I still had the fire in my belly that I really wanted to do sports presenting in some way. And then that's when I did all my journalism courses and learn how to edit, learn how to voice over, learn how to write scripts, learn how to, you know, recognise a story and, um, and yeah, so on and so forth. And then worked my way through the ranks, went up to BBC Northwest as a presenter there for a year and then went to Sky because they offered me four days. And so I gave up my BBC staff contract for four days at Sky. And here I am nine years later. So, so did you, you, you genuinely gave up your job at the BBC that was yeah. full time and secure and paid yeah. for... A chance with to work in sport with Sky Sports yeah yeah um, I think at the time though it was a huge risk I was actually in Manchester at the time and, and the job in Manchester at the BBC had come to its end it, it was an attachment um, I hoped that they were going to take me on um, but the boss moved on which happens it's a bit like you know in management and the players move out and, and that's what happened a new boss came in she brought her own sports presenter a uh, Mr Dan Walker I'm sure you've never heard of him before. very very unsuccessful sports yeah presenter. He's, he's gone on to do nothing since then <laughs> um, yeah so Dan took over from me ironically there and then he kind of moved through the BBC as well because obviously the BBC had huge changes then because they went up to Salford as well so that was great for him they started to see him as a, a talent and look what he's doing now so you know looking back I remember the day that Sky literally was on the phone to the boss at Sky and he said oh, I can give you four four five days um, and I remember thinking oh BBC staff job what am I doing but there was something in my heart that just thought do you know what take a risk it's it's a calculated risk but one I have looked back on I think the best thing I ever did um, so go on, so tell us what it is that you love about your job now what, oh, what is it that what is it that you uh, you really enjoy that makes you smile about working working at Sky what's not to love um, just I guess the whole thing is it's live it's changing I don't do homework because my homework is watching sport that I'm doing anyway um, it's just all consuming and it's do you know what it's the only job that I have to do on my early shift I get up at 4 a.m. or 3 a.m. yeah okay. um, but I literally get up with a little bit of a glint in my eye which sounds a bit sad really but I do because you just don't know what you're gonna face it's it's like any live broadcaster I suppose and it and the sport as well because it's my passion you don't know what's going to happen in those three hours, four hours that you're on air. Anything could happen. You have to be prepared. So you do all your research, but you can only do as much as you can do. And then you go on air and then breaking news, Fabio Capello resigns as uh, England manager, you know, and you've got to deal with it. And it's just amazing. And that's when the job really comes alive for me. Um, but I just, I think it's also being in a comfort zone. I love my job because I'm comfortable at it because I've done it for such a long time. And, you know, but I worked hard to get there. So I kind of, I suppose it's that... You know, every day you're kind of giving yourself a bit of a pat on the back and say, well done, because you got to where you wanted to be, you know, and, and who knows what the future holds. Um, and you um, obviously did quite a lot of presenting and sort of fronted a lot of the um, Sky Sports coverage for 2012. Yes. Um, so how was that as an experience? Oh, amazing. The, the, the fact that we were in this studio as well, we created this studio atop of um, Westfield. Amazing views of the centre, the whole of the whole place. Just phenomenal and the great thing was that the guy that um built the stadium or uh, he didn't build it he didn't use do the bricks he uh, designed it uh so the architect i think that's the word i'm looking for um he came into the studio and he literally took that we had the back window a bit like this here and he just went now that's a view of my stadium and i thought well if he thinks it's good then it was amazing do you know what it was like it was 
It was like being on a different planet. For, it certainly wasn't like being in the UK. The atmosphere at Stratford was incredible. We used to get biked there as well because public transport was a bit kind of, you know, busy to say the least and we obviously couldn't run the risk of being late. So I used to get on the back of a motorbike most days and get sort of zoomed into Stratford and, and just going there again fills you with absolute excitement. How many golds are we going to get? Who was going to do what? Who was going to be the story? And I'll never forget when um, Super Saturday was on. I was just leaving actually at that time. And to hear the stadium roar, it just was phenomenal. I, you know, luckily I did get tickets. I've got tickets in the ballot, in the first ballot. It did work. Uh, yeah, and I did see Usain Bolt in the semi-finals, but I mean, he just was breezing it anyway. But anyway, um, so yeah, I got to go in the stadium. I just, the whole Olympics, the Olympics fever was incredible. And it was just great to be a part of broadcasting it. I, I think people saw a different side to Sky Sports during the Olympics, because a lot of people do think Sky Sports news is, is, is solely about football. But actually, in the build-up to 2012, there was a Sky Sports scholars Mm -hmm. Now your scholar and uh, sort of has has gone on to have a fantastic winter and, yeah. and looks really exciting for this summer as well. Yeah. She, do you know what she is? She's an awesome athlete, um, and she I know she can do even better on flat. And, and it, the, the, her coach Chris is kind of desperate for her not to go to flat yet, and she did there only the other day, and she won. You know she's very capable at 400 meters, so she'll go on to huge things. But yeah, I, like you say, for Sky, it was a, a kind of, we were stepping out a bit of, out of a comfort zone. We had a brilliant summer anyway. I'd already um, done Wimbledon for them as well, for, for a top of a great studio. And, and the BBC looked at us and said, hmm, that's a rather large studio on the fourth, group, fourth tee uh, that we were on the golf course overlooking Wimbledon. It was just stunning. Um, so Sky is a brilliant place because they make it look great. Um, and we did, we did have a brilliant studio and we did make it look really wonderful. And it was, it was really refreshing to sort of tune in and people were saying oh it's great to see that, that we are covering okay we couldn't we didn't have all the picture rights but we did it in different ways and we had a lot of you know experts at our sky pad and it was a really nice way of doing the olympics even though you didn't necessarily have all the pictures all the time and so obviously you've been with sky sports for nine years and i'm sure you'll stay for at least that long yeah. uh, if not longer of course um but what what ambitions remain what would you still like to do do you know it's really hard because at the moment i guess um I'm not in a, a situation where I haven't achieved something at the moment. And I guess that's, that's a nice place to be, but it's kind of, oh, well, why not? What, I, somebody once told me, you know, enjoy the journey, not just the destination. And I know I haven't reached my destination yet, but I'm on one hell of a journey and I'm just loving it still. So I think, well, until that day stops, then I'll probably try and think, well, what's next then? At the moment, I haven't got a what, what's next. I'm just really enjoying it because because it's sport, it changes all the time and there's different elements to it. Like I say, last year was Wimbledon for me and the Olympics. And I also hosted some of the things for LOCOG as well. I did the women's football and doing a lot of live stuff is, is really good as well. So kind of you get different elements to your job and I've done the women's FA Cup final which again I don't know whether Sky are doing that this year again but you know there's all sorts of things that that crop up and you think oh well that's going to come my way hopefully so you know I guess at the moment there's there's no, no one job that I'm really desperate to, to do because I love the job that I do on a daily basis so it's a hard question to answer. And so without um, obviously going over the whole 20 minutes of your presentation again of course from earlier on if, if you had some advice for people who maybe weren't at Graduate Jobs in Sport Live today about how to try and forge a career in broadcast journalism you know I know it's difficult to surmise but in terms of a synopsis what, what would you say that you know what are the character traits what, what, do, what is it that people need to do to try and achieve those sorts of goals? Do you know what I think doing anything in broadcast journal, any any graduate scheme, any um, studying that you can do, any qualification that you can get would be a great thing. I was uh, saying earlier on that you you know, you know, might look at a course and you think, well, it's got eight strands and two of them I'm not really that keen on, but you never know when those two will come into play. Like if you listen to my um, discussion earlier, you know, it was very much about things that I did way back when I was 16, 17 that I never thought anything of but actually later on in my career I thought oh I can go back on that qualification I can use that now so I guess it's just always choose a path that you're interested in and that I can tell you you know can't say enough if this if you genuinely have a passion for something you're going to excel because you're going to want to do it to the best of your ability because you're keen on it if you're not that interested don't bother with it you know say to yourself well actually okay I'm looking at a course it's got eight strands and only I only like two of them choose a different course there's so many out there that you can get all the elements um, to become a good broadcaster you know a good broadcast journalist so perfect Vicky thank you very much for sparing us the time today to come to Graduate Jobs in Sport Live and thank you for that as well it's great really great insight thank you